In 2013, we learned from Edward Snowden that the NSA collects information about Americans' phone and internet communications even when they think you haven't done anything wrong. On one hand, this makes me feel exposed. Prism. Prism is how they pull your junk out of Google with Google's involvement. On the other hand, this makes me roll my eyes. I have a difficult enough time attracting attention to this video, let alone any dissident activity. Out of our weariness, let's be encouraged by people who resist mass surveillance. Laura Poitras is a filmmaker who made the recent documentary about Edward Snowden. I ask only that you ensure this information makes it home to the American public. Thank you, and be careful. Citizen Four. Her book, Astro Noise, A Survival Guide for Living Under Total Surveillance, is the companion book to an art exhibit she put together. And by the way, it's beautiful. I'd highly recommend it. Let's learn four tips from her contributors in this video of Justice for All. First, use encryption. It's kind of obvious, but if governments are going to try to surveil you, make it difficult for them by using encryption. Encryption is any mathematical disguise that a program makes to your messages so that to anyone who intercepts it, it'll just look like random noise. The best encryption is end-to-end because then even the company disguising the messages, like Apple or Facebook, doesn't know what you're really sending, and can't give your original message over even if they wanted to. Snowden's contribution to the book is a short reflection about maybe using the stars to help create better encryption. That's the title, Astro Noise. In other words, surveillance holds on to everything, but Snowden says that encryption returns us to a connection with the rest of the world that's just for this particular moment. Using encryption should be part of any political resistance. And by the way, despite what you may have heard, WhatsApp is actually one of the best apps out there for encryption. But honestly, this tip is difficult for me, because after Snowden, it's hard for me to believe that any message is really secure. Second, locate the genuine evil in the fantastically dull. In my favorite chapter, Cory Doctorow imagines that Sherlock Holmes is resisting the NSA in the British version, GCHQ, today. Dr. O uses the story to illustrate the real flow of information, from surveillance all the way to boys being swept up to a CIA torture site. In the story, Sherlock Holmes is a good detective because he looks at the nitty gritty. Watson complains, I got a sort of fatigue from the Snowden news, it was all so technical and so dismal. And Holmes replies, tedium and dismalness are powerful weapons, far more powerful than secrecy in many cases. Any bit of business that can be made sufficiently tedious and overcomplexified naturally repels public attention and all but the most diligent of investigators. If you want to do something genuinely evil, it is best for you that it also be fantastically dull. Think of an issue that you're really familiar with. Trump care, climate change, whatever. What are ways that genuine evil is located in the fantastically dull? Who will translate that convincingly to others? Third, be a model citizen by dissenting. Laura Poitras, the editor of the book, built her resistance chops by making documentaries about America's response to 9-11. As thanks for her effort, she was put on a secret selectee list of people to hassle when they fly. So between 2006 and 2012, she was detained in question more than 40 times without explanation. Eventually, she moved to Berlin to be safe. On a personal note, a friend of mine from high school who leads union activism in Jacksonville has been surveilled by the Jacksonville police and is now facing a trumped up felony charge. Troublemakers like Laura Poitras and Edward Snowden have done the state some service, Alex Danchi says in the last chapter. Dissenters are model citizens. What's new to me about this tip isn't that dissenting is positive, it's that people can have a citizen identity that's important to them. People like Snowden and Poitras develop their citizen identity when they dissent. Just like I develop my husband and employee identities when I clean the dishes and help other people in the office, respectively. For anyone watching this, how much do you see yourself having a citizen identity? How much do you dissent to be a model citizen? Finally, speak your own narrative. Jacob Applebaum's contribution is written as a letter to future children. He says, there is always data to construct any narrative. Narratives are selections of data. They're how we make sense of the world. So it's not about how much data we gather, it's about what we choose to emphasize. And they have enough data to describe you as whoever they want you to be. For instance, after Snowden leaked documents from the NSA, he tried to get to Cuba, but the US invalidated his passport when he was in Russia. Oh look, you can say Russia kept him, he must be a Russian spy. Don't trust their smear tactics. 
In fact, speak your own narrative. Laura Poitras' contribution to the book, ironically, is excerpts from her diary, and Ai Weiwei's is pictures of him being surveilled. These contributors made private things public in order to fight the NSA, who also makes private things public. But the difference is that they chose to. What smear campaigns are we resisting as we pursue justice for all? How are we speaking out our own narratives? Overall, thank you to Laura Poitras and others who resist the NSA for your courage and commitment. May justice come for all.